Today we're going to be showing you how to change a water pump on C7, C9s, and 3126. And that's the water pump right there. Hey guys, today I wanted to do a video on one of the more common failures on CAT's smaller engines, the water pump. It's pretty straightforward. There's no specialty tools required to change it out. In fact, the hardest part is after getting it out, usually swapping over the fittings or plugs. So on these smaller CAT engines, it's an external water pump with a belt drive. And depending on what model you have, it might have the V belt or it might be a serpentine belt. And this one, the shaft failed, which is a fairly uncommon problem on these water pumps. Usually what happens is the weep hole, which sits right there, starts leaking. If your weep hole starts dripping coolant, you have to change the pump. There's no other fix for it. So this hose here runs up to your thermostat housing. That should be changed. This hose here runs to your air compressor if you have one. And it doesn't have to be changed, but if it's uh, brittle or non-flexible, I recommend changing it. There are four bolts that hold the water pump on. There's one down there, below the weep hole, one there, and then two on the top. And there's only bolts on this side of the water pump, although it does work that way. So you have to loosen the belt tensioner for the V-belt separately from the serpentine belt, if yours has the V-belt. And it's done by these two 13 millimeter headed bolts. And also the lower radiator hose goes into the water pump and you'll have to loosen and remove that. So I've removed the serpentine belt as you can see. And I just if you're unfamiliar with these serpentine belt tensioners, I kind of wanted to go over what it takes to remove these. And what you need typically is a half inch ratchet. And what you need to do, that's your tensioner, is there's a half inch square drive on most tensioners right there. And you put your ratchet in there, and it's a spring assembly, and it allows you to loosen the tensioner. And that will allow you to remove the serpentine belt, and then we'll remove the tensioner after that. So say your belt's on, you would just move it that way to loosen it. Slide your belt off, then we're going to remove the tensioner. So we're going to remove the tensioner. It's just a single 16 millimeter headed bolt. So the bolt's been loosened. I typically leave the bolt in the tensioner. And then you remove the tensioner and the bolt as an assembly. Now the tensioner is held in by the bolt. There's also a pin, and that pin needs to go in. There's a pin hole on the bracket that holds it in. Make sure it goes in there, or else it won't align properly, and you could damage the tensioner. So just be cognizant of that when you're reinstalling it. Now we need to loosen the inner belt if yours has the V-belt. So it's those two 13 millimeter head bolts. You don't need to remove them. You just need to loosen them. So unfortunately, they're kind of tough to get to. You'll Typically, the best way to get it is a tip, uh, normal ratchet, not an air ratchet or an impact, just because the dampener is usually in front of it. And you just need to loosen them up. Usually go about, you know, eight turns out, just so they're loose enough that that, that manual tensioner can be removed. Now this tensioner here also has a half inch square drive in it. So when you're reinstalling the belt, you can install a half inch ratchet. Uh, usually you need to use like a little extension with your ratchet to tighten the belt, then tighten the bolts. It's not self tightening like the tensioner, the uh, serpentine belt tensioner is. So as you can see, we've loosened it. Now you can get your V belt off, slide it over the dampener. If you're going to change your belts, now's a really good time to do it. So you can see, make sure the bearings are okay in the tensioner. Uh, you can see that the shaft is really loose in this water pump and that's what's causing the leak. And remove that hose there. So the air compressor coolant hose has been removed. I also removed the idler pulley that was sitting above the water pump for access. And I removed the air conditioning compressor from the bracket it's bolted to. 
Now, depending on what model you have, it might or might not bolt to the water pump. This one obviously does bolt to the water pump, so you'll need to remove that bracket in order to get it out of there. Now, if it's in a truck, you may not have to remove the bracket in chassis. You might be able to do it out chassis. So before we pull the water pump, you're going to need to loosen the clamps on your lower radiator hose, which sits down there, and your upper thermostat hose, which is the arrow. So I've removed the bolts. Now the four bolts, they're 16 millimeter headed bolts. Four of them. And once they're out, and you've loosened the thermostat housing clamp and removed the lower radiator hose, you should be good to go. Now this one had a hose facing backwards that I couldn't get a clear video on. Uh, most trucks, if they do have those, you'll have to remove that too, obviously. And this is in an RV. So I leave that hose on, then I pull it, and when you go to put it back on, you're gonna put the hose on first, put it in the nipple of the thermostat housing, then you install your bolts. So I wanna show you where these seals seal against the back of the block and the oil cooler for the water pump. You can see around where the bolts are, there's a large hole and a small hole. That's where the O-rings go. So here's your bolts, and here's your seal. That's your lower seal and your upper seal where they seal. And the seals sit inside the water pump. I'm gonna show you here in a second. This is the water pump, and here's your pulley for the V-belt. If you have the serpentine belt, you have a removable pulley with four 13-millimeter headed bolts. And you're going to want to check your plugs. Depending on the water pump, it may or may not come with new plugs. And right here are where your new seals go. Do not forget to put your two O-rings there, or else this will leak, and you'll have to redo this. And so depending on what your setup is, you're going to have to remove these fittings and reseal them. That's the hardest part because those fittings are so large. Sometimes they really are tight in there and trying to get them out and reseal them is a pain in the butt. Now depending on what part number you got, you may or may not got seals with your water pump. That's pretty normal. Most cat parts don't come with seals. Uh, the water pumps sometimes do come with seals. Uh, sometimes they'll just come with the seals for the back of the water pump, but not the new plug seals. Sometimes they'll come with all the seals. Sometimes they'll come with new plugs and seals. It seems like it's just random. Um, sometimes the same part number will have plugs and seals. Sometimes they won't. Um, so before you leave the cat or whatever place you got the pump from, make sure it has the seals with it because I'm sure you don't want to have to go back. All right, thank you. So I wanted to go over a little trick here I have for you. If you have trouble with the O-rings falling out of the back of the water pump, um, Cat makes a high vacuum grease. You can also use like a sticky dielectric grease. And it's uh, good for putting O-rings in places where they've been falling out. It's sticky and it won't damage the O-ring. So you could put it on the O-rings and it won't damage them. And it'll go in place and it'll help it seal. Alright, so try that if you're having trouble getting those O-rings to stick. So I've installed the water pump. Basically you're just going to do everything I already showed you in reverse. And for the torque specs, if you wish to torque them, uh, these bolts, any of the 16 millimeter headed bolts are going to torque to about 40 foot pounds, and any of the 13 millimeter bolt headed bolts are going to torque to about 20 foot pounds. All right, thank you.